Okay, and up on the stool there. Real up tall. here? It's on the shirts and the jackets. And the we need the jackets zipped or you want to leave them? Why don't we zip them up and go about right? About half an ass. Okay, good. careful when you're adjusting this. This is a canopy jettison. I okay. know about taking the pins out. Okay. Um, there's a radar altimeter. I'll just leave that on and tell you how high we are. Uh, it's a little bit more accurate. Okay. okay. the descent control tether and rope bag. That's your sky gear. Throw the rope bag overboard, attach the tether, attach that to your carabiner, climb the MSC, and you descend over the top. And you've got the line coming in here and it's wrapped around the bar in the middle three and a half times. And almost any tension at all on this 
create enough friction to completely stop the fall. And I let up on it, and you still go at a fairly slow rate of descent. Five on A actually have drifted aft a little bit. That's a data. 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 That's a 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 data. Okay, it's red, the indoor. <laughs> but, you know, you'll see things at the same kind of time frame as you're seeing it now. It does look different. People <laughs> start collecting around. Yeah. Yeah. Balls. No way. Uh, no way. <laughs> this is Dr. Bill's. Uh, this is oh, this will be a kind of so. now, Like I say, the bag will, will look different. It's a bigger bag. Okay. So all three DSOs are going to be the same. Yes, sir. Okay. this camel, but okay. we'll be, I'll be back be over, over here or, up, or upstairs. So if right at the end I could get everybody over here, that would work. Everybody, everybody could come over if you wanted to. Jim yeah. could come down from upstairs. Yeah, I, could, I think that would be nice. I think, oh, that's going to be great. Right. <laughs> and then this camera is going to talk about the galley. And, the uh, lockers. The, the lockers. galley, the lockers. The the, the treadmill, where the other seats um, and were, and the airlock, and then the crew, and then the crew will come over. Yeah, we should be. We just showed up. We can see it up here.
Good afternoon. I'd like to introduce to you the commander of STS-51L, Commander Dick Scobie, who will introduce the rest of his crew, and they'll say a few words. Our fans are over here in the corner. <laughs> As usual, it's a real pleasure to be at the Cape to come down here and participate in something that the Cape does better than anybody in the world, and that's launching space vehicles. It's, uh, it's a great pleasure for us to be here. We expect weather like this on uh, Sunday when we launch, and you all do the best to keep it that way as you would. And what I'll do is introduce the next crew member, and we'll just go down the line, let everybody say a little, uh, little bit as we go. And uh, I'd like to introduce my pilot, Mike Smith, who's one of the best flyers in the world, and he's great to have in the, in the shuttle, and I'm glad to have him aboard as a pilot. So here's Mike. Thanks, Dick. Uh, let me echo uh, what Dick said about it's uh, good to be down here and uh, to be flying a vehicle that we know a lot of folks down here have worked very hard on. We understand it's ready to go, and we're looking forward to going to fly. Uh, I'm one of the three people on board who, who's, and it'll be, be my first time to fly. Krista McAuliffe and uh, Greg Jarvis, will all, it'll also be their first time, and we're just all looking forward to getting on over and getting the uh, secret handshake. <laughs> I'd like to uh, introduce now Judy Resnick. She's, a, she's our center seater and uh, keep sticking eye honest on the uh, system problems. Judy? Well, I too am glad to be here one more time, and uh, I am hoping that the, the uh, affliction that Steve Hawley had from the 41D mission, mission specialist of the delays, hasn't rubbed off on me, and I think the guys behind me are hoping that it hasn't also, otherwise they might throw me off the flight. And I will now introduce El Onizuka. Let me say that uh, it's really a pleasure to be back. Uh, I'm looking forward to going to fly this one. I think we got some uh, real interesting payloads. The mission is a, is a great mission. We're looking forward to it, and I think uh, we're ready to go fly. Thanks for uh, being out here today. I forgot the one thing I was supposed to do. Let me introduce uh, Ron McNair, who is uh, going to be doing a lot of work with the Spartan Halley mission and uh, carrying on a lot of the experiments that will be going on in the crew compartment. Again, I'd like to echo the opinions of my crew members that we look forward to returning, launching from the Cape, first of all, and returning here a few days later. I had the privilege of being a part of the crew a couple of years ago that made the first landing here at the Cape, and I intend to be a part of the crew to make the first return landing to the Cape in about a week. At this time, I'd like to introduce you, or to a, perhaps the person you, you came to see, and that's uh, Krista McAuliffe, our payload specialist teacher in space. Well, I am so excited to be here. Um, we watched Columbia go over the Houston area this morning, and that was a thrill. I don't think any teacher has ever been more ready to have two lessons in my life. I've been preparing these in September, and I just hope everybody tunes in on day four now to watch the teacher teaching from space. I'd like to introduce to you someone who's going to be in my second lesson, Greg Jarvis, the payload specialist from Hughes. It's a, a great pleasure, finally, to get this far. Uh, I'm uh, very proud to be part of the program that NASA and Hughes have put together, and I'm glad to be representing the Hughes Aircraft Company as their payload specialist. Without any further ado, I'll uh, get off the stage so you can all get going. Thank you very much. <laughs> And uh, then we have uh, Commander Dick Scobie uh, sitting beside uh, Pilot Mike Smith in front of the traditional cake featuring Halley's Comet and an uh, apple for the teacher. Judy Resnick on the left, mission specialist, along with Ron McNair and payload specialist Greg Jarvis, all members of the uh, 51L crew. And they're going to give it another shot today. There they are, the crew of Mission 51L including teacher and space participant and the first private citizen to fly in space, Krista McAuliffe. 
This is shuttle uh, launch control at T minus two minutes, 20, I mean two hours, 28 minutes and counting. Here comes the uh, 51 hour flight crew boarding the elevator uh, for the second time in two days, ready to depart the ONC building for the launch pad. And they'll ride down the uh, three floors to the main level where they will uh, exit the ONC building, traditionally met by the members of the media who are uh, standing by waiting to uh, document. And this is the work crew here that uh, has been uh, very active in uh, preparing the 51L mission at the Operations and Checkout Building. The payloads, which include a TDRA satellite, Pratt and Halley experiment. And here comes the flight crew now. Commander Dick Scobie, followed by Mission Specialist uh, Judy Ruffin, Ron McNair, Pilot Mike Smith, followed by Krista Masala, teacher in space, and Ellison Onizuka, and payload specialist Greg Jarvis. Big smiles today. Confidently getting into the van. They're going to go up to that pad and uh, attempt a second try, second launch, second try at launch today. And the first crew member, Commander Dick Scobie, now uh, in the White Room, taking off his jacket, uh, along with uh, Mike Smith, who is the, uh, the pilot. T minus 15 seconds. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. We have main engine start. Four, three, two, one, and liftoff. Liftoff of the 25th Space Shuttle mission, and it has cleared the tower. Good roll program confirmed. Challenger now heading down range. Engines beginning throttling down now at 94%. Normal throttles uh, for most of the flight, 104%. We'll throttle down to uh, 65% shortly. Engines at 65%, three engines uh, running normally, three good fuel cells, three good APUs. Velocity 2,257 feet per second. Altitude 4.3 nautical miles, downrange distance 3 nautical miles. Engines throttling up, 3 engines now at 104%. Challenger, go with throttle up. Challenger, go with throttle up. One minute, 15 seconds. Velocity 2,900 feet per second. Altitude 9 nautical miles, downrange distance 7 nautical miles. carefully at the situation. Obviously a major malfunction. We have no downlink. This is Mission Control Houston. We have no additional word at this time. dynamics officer indicate that the vehicle uh, apparently exploded and that uh, impact uh, in the water at a, a point approximately 28.64 uh, degrees north, uh, 80.28 uh, degrees west. We are awaiting uh, verification from uh, uh, as to the location of the recovery forces in the field to, to see what uh, may be possible at this point.
That buck confirmed. Lift off. Houston Challenger, roll program. Roger, roll, Challenger. Good roll, flight. Roger, good roll. Three at 65. 65, Fido. TDL confirms throttle. Thank you. Challenger, go with throttle up. Roger, go with throttle up. Fido trajectory. Go ahead. Flight GC, we've had uh, negative contact, we lost the downlink. Okay, all operators, watch your data carefully. Flight Fido until we get stuff back, he's on his cue card for abort modes. Flight GC, negative downlink. Copy. Flight Fido. Go ahead. RSO reports vehicle exploded. Copy. Fido, can we get any reports from recovery forces? Stand by. Fido, flight. Go ahead. Did the RSOs have an impact point? Stand by. Okay, everybody, stay off the telephones. Make sure you maintain all your data. Start pulling it together. Fido, flight. Go ahead, sir. Are the LSOs on the loop? We can get them. Get them up on this loop, please. On your own. Yes, sir, it's the LSO. Okay, are there any forces headed out that way? Yes, sir. DOD LSO reports that all, all soft forces have been scrambled and they are on their way. A large-scale search effort was initiated to recover the space shuttle debris. 22 ships, six underwater search vessels, and 33 aircraft participated in the operation. The pieces recovered initially were those found floating on the surface. The submarine fleet was used to locate and inspect underwater debris. Objects identified as being important to the investigation were retrieved. Fifty percent of the entire vehicle was recovered in the effort. Steady, Bob. I got you. You got it?
we have a video release of the way in which the fragments from the STS-51L accident are being brought back and after being cleaned up are being laid out on a grid in the KSC logistics facility. You'll notice that they're being placed on a grid uh, drawn on the floor in conformance with the National Transportation Safety Board's normal procedures. The view shown on the videotape is taken looking from a corner of the facility uh, along the port side or the left side of the orbiter from the tail looking forward toward the nose. We come together today to mourn the loss of seven brave Americans, to share the grief that we all feel, and perhaps in that sharing to find the strength to bear our sorrow and the courage to look for the seeds of hope. Our nation's loss is first a profound personal loss to the family and the friends and the loved ones of our shuttle astronauts. The best we can do is remember our seven astronauts, our Challenger 7. Remember them as they lived, bringing life and love and joy to those who knew them and pride to a nation. They came from all parts of this great country, from South Carolina to Washington State, Ohio to Mohawk, New York, Hawaii to North Carolina to Concord, New Hampshire. They were so different, yet in their mission, their quest, they held so much in common. The future is not free. The story of all human progress is one of a struggle against all odds. We learned again that this America, which Abraham Lincoln called the last best hope of man on earth, was built on heroism and noble sacrifice. It was built by men and women like our seven star voyagers, who answered a call beyond duty, who gave more than was expected or required, and who gave it little thought of worldly reward. Today, the frontier is space and the boundaries of human knowledge. Sometimes when we reach for the stars, we fall short, but we must pick ourselves up again and press on despite the pain. Our nation is indeed fortunate that we can still draw on immense reservoirs of courage, character, and fortitude, that we're still blessed with heroes like those of the Space Shuttle Challenger. Dick, Mike, Judy, Elle, Ron, Greg, and Krista, your families and your country mourn your passing. We bid you goodbye. We will never forget you. May God bless you all and give you comfort in this difficult time. 